I'm Daniel Scher, Professor of Electrophysiology at the Medical University of Graz, Austria, and it's a pleasure to be here. Well, uh, thank you uh, for inviting me. Well, first of all, I have to say I'm speaking here on behalf of all Manifest investigators. That's 22 centers, 48 investigators all over Europe. The study PI is Vivek Reddy from Mount Sinai Hospital, New York. And really the reasoning behind this uh, that we are that we are already hitting 200,000 PFA, approximately 200,000 PFA procedures worldwide. And really the pentaspline catheter uh, has been leading the way. It's the most used catheter and uh, it's certainly been part of most PFA studies. The Manifest Consortium was put together three years ago, investigating in 100,050 patients, not only the safety aspects of PF, a ablation in AFib, but also the efficacy uh, aspects of it. And we've been publishing quite successfully. Now we know that PFA works, but uh, also recurrences of atrial fibrillation happen and um, um, repeat ablations for atrial fibrillation are necessary. And the um, outcomes, efficacy outcomes and safety outcomes of those repeat ablations in patients who previously had an AFib ablation with PFA are largely unknown. The second thing that makes our study um, relevant is the fact that we, really the aspect of PVI durability, which is important in AFib ablation to sustain sinus rhythm, um, hasn't been thoroughly investigated with PFA, especially in the repeat ablation patient population. Now, I would like to highlight two smaller studies. The Uphoria um, Registry, nice paper, 140 patients. And they really showed that in a repeat ablation population, so those were patients that previously had an ablation for atrial fibrillation using the pentaspline catheter, using PFA. Those patients came back for clinical failures and they were remapped and reablated. And in these procedures, it was found that only 70% of all veins were isolated at the start of the procedure, and only 38% of all patients had durably isolated veins at the start of the procedure. Uh, and, this, uh, and the similar finding was found by uh, Pia Jais and colleagues in a smaller um, um, registry. So um, you, could, you, you can look at it in a way that, that we're trying to assess in the repeat, um, repeat ablation population, uh, patients that have previously undergone a PFA ablation, the, um, the incidence and maybe predictors of a pulmonary vein isolation uh, and, 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 and pulmonary vein reconnection. It's the largest, at least to my knowledge, uh, PFA repeat ablation population that's been investigated so far. It's out of the manifest cohort, 427 patients uh, in 22 European centers uh, that underwent a repeat ablation for an atrial fibrillation or atrial tachycardia recurrence after a previous PFA ablation with the pentaspine catheter. Now, uh, those, uh, um, uh, those procedures took place, uh, I mean, nine months after the initial ablation procedure. And, um, and, and, I, and I think the findings were quite interesting. I'd like to, to highlight, you know, I'll, I'll probably skip um, uh, the procedural part as, um, as I think uh, we have, we've published this and the paper uh, on our findings is as of yesterday uh, already online, available online in, in Europace. But I'd like to highlight uh, maybe two findings and, um, and, and maybe we could discuss this. So I'm going to start with the first one. And that is really uh, pulmonary vein isolation durability. So again, those 427 patients came back to the lab and were mapped. They all had a previous PFA ablation with the pentaspline catheter, and they had a clinical failure for AFib, ATAC. So and when they were mapped, it was found that only 45% of those patients had four durably isolated veins. And on a, on a pulmonary vein level, 71% overall of all pulmonary veins were isolated. Um, it was um, the, the reconnections were evenly distributed among the main four pulmonary veins, so left superior, you know, right superior, and so on. Um, uh, that's interesting. And also, I think, although only univariately associated, one interesting finding also was 
that if the operator had used in the first procedure some sort of imaging, CT imaging, ice imaging, rotational angiography, or electroanatomic mapping, as opposed to having done the procedure only with fluoroscopy. So the use of, of, of some sort of imaging increased the PVI durability rate significantly. This is a new univerically finding, so you have to be cautious, but certainly as it changed my clinical practice, uh, remember this is Europe, uh, not all centers, not all countries are using ICE, but uh, from now on, you know, I, I think it's, it's mandatory to, if you use uh, the pentaspline catheter, to, to, to use some sort of imaging or electroanatomic uh, um, mapping in your procedure. Now another finding, and I'll stop there for the first part, this is PVI uh, durability, which is natural and which we've seen in the past, is uh, with other, you know, with thermal energies, is the fact that, um, um, you know, uh, par par paroxysmal, um, uh, you know, the, it, it, the distribution was different in terms of PV reconnection between paroxysmal and persistent AF patients. But may I add one, one more interesting thing to put that finding into perspective? And that is, you, you know, you can kind of look at the glass of half full or half empty. So one would say, wow, that's, that's this great new catheter and, you know, uh, only 45% of patients have four durably isolated veins. Well, guess what? At least in my knowledge, in a clinical failure population, a clinical repeat ablation population, that's about the highest number, at least that I'm aware of, that's ever been reported for any energy form uh, of, a, of PVI durability rate in a repeat, repeat ablation population. If you look back to seminal studies like uh, fire and ice or circa dose, you know, investigating RF ablation in, in AF or investigating cryo balloon ablation in AF, what you will find when you look at their repeat ablation papers, you know, uh, PVI durability rates in the repeat ablation population, they were significantly lower. I think in, 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 in circa dose, it was like 10% on the patient level as opposed to 45% in our study. Uh, and um, I think uh, on the pulmonary vein level, it was something between 45 and 60% in those studies as opposed to 70% in our study. So yes, also with the pentaspine catheter, also with PFA, we can do better in terms of PVI durability, but it's already a great start for a new technology. Let me, you know, certainly not uh, shed light on the findings from Manifest Redo because it's the original Manifest Redo study, but certainly, you know, add to the findings of Manifest. Um, and, um, and, and, um, and, you know, another clinical finding, you know, it's, it's, it's all about the patient. So on the clinical side, um, what, you know, uh, Manifest Redo also is telling us, besides those interesting findings on PVI durability, what can a patient expect in terms of success rate if he undergoes a repeat ablation after having previously undergone a PFA ablation? And the findings are quite encouraging. Uh, so in Manifest Redo, Overall, 65% um, of all patients achieved sinus rhythm with their second procedure. You know, 65% not of the overall cohort, but just of the you know, previous kind of failure cohort that went for repeat ablation. I think that's an encouraging finding. And in those 65%, you, you, see, you, you see the obvious that you know, uh, people that came back with, uh, with the recurrent arrhythmia being paroxysmal AF or atrial tachycardia doing better than those patients who came back uh, with persistent AF. And again, um, uh, persistent AF being the recurrent uh, arrhythmia, being a predictor of worse outcome as opposed to, uh, to, to paroxysmal AF. Thank you. These findings should, in my view, um, impact clini uh, the clinical practice in, in three ways. For me, um, it's, it's been um, an encouraging finding with regard to PFA and AFib ablation in general, and specifically to the pentaspline catheter. So, you know, we certainly cannot cure all of these patients, but, you know, overall, the patients are doing really well. There is a, there's a high efficacy rate and there's a good safety profile. Number two, finding, um, finding number two for me is, uh, you know, a patient who comes back with a recurrent symptomatic arrhythmia um, after having previously undergone um, uh, an AFib ablation with PFA with the pentaspline catheter, should be encouraged to undergo uh, um, um, a second ablation because the outcome is, is, is fairly good. And finding uh, number three is that, you know, with all these encouraging findings 
And with uh, the pentaspine catheter in this repeat ablation population showing us fairly high PVI durability rates, you know, 45% on the patient level, 71% on the pulmonary level, there is still, still room for improvement in terms of uh, PVI durability. So what can we do? Remember that manifest, that manifest redo covers the very early experience. Those were patients done in 2021, 2022. So we have learned quite a bit on how to handle PFA, on how to handle the pentaspine catheter, to give additional applications on the anterior side of the right pulmonary veins, uh, olive applications, carina applications. So I think we have improved already. Uh, and uh, a second thing that, that I'm really uh, looking forward to is, is, is uh, kind of uh, um, the second generation catheters that are truly um, uh, 3D integrated, uh, single shot PFA devices and the pentaspine catheter will be one of those. That's going to improve success rates and PVI durability rates, I'm sure. It's just a hypothesis, but I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. And, um, <clears throat> and um, finding number three is really for your daily practice, you know, um, uh, when you do, when you treat the patient with AFib, um, with, uh, with PFA, with the pentaspine catheter, you know, in whatever setting you are, in whatever part of the world you are, use some sort of additional imaging or mapping, whether it's ICE, whether it's electroanatomic mapping, whether it's a pre-procedural CT, or whether it's rotational angiography. Well, certainly it's exciting times, right? Uh, uh, for our patients, uh, you know, Industry especially has really been driving progress over the last couple of years. Um, yeah, the procedures have, and that's the most important thing, um, you know, a reasonable safety uh, profile and have shown high efficacy and, and also high lab efficiency. Remember that, um, you know, uh, those, those days when our AFib procedures took a couple of hours are not, you know, they are, they're only 10, 15 years uh, past. So now, you know, you can, you, can, you can do a PVI isolation in the symptomatic patients in 30 minutes at best with, uh, with, with these new technologies. Uh, uh, additional research is needed. You know, uh, efficacy is encouraging. Safety always can be better, but is encouraging. So, uh, but, 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 you know, we can, we can do better in terms of PVI durability. We can do better in terms of success rates. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really looking forward to all the findings of this meeting and of all the research ongoing uh, with these with these new platforms. And again, I want to highlight and stress the fact that uh, that PBI durability is key, and 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 we have to improve on that. And and you know, with with uh, 3D integration and and ice and all these things, uh, we're working on that.